He was so vocally down bad. I was just down, down bad. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're jumping into our slash neck beard stories. Kinda. It comes from my personal subreddit. R slash red X reads, as if you didn't know. This is the perverted folly of Downbeard. I'm not sure if we're gonna get demonetized for this one. It comes from Cake Jerry, and he says right in the beginning that, you know, it's it's at risk of some of that stuff. So we're just gonna do our best to dodge it, you know, like we usually do. <laughs> And hopefully everything's gonna go just fine. This is the first of our two videos today. The second one will be uploaded around eight hours from now because I think spacing them out a little bit more is the right move. And then, you know, you get a double dose of cringe throughout the day. You don't want to binge the cringe, okay? <laughs> That's not good for anybody's mental health. But the second video up today, if you do want to wait around for it, is some r slash pro revenge. So after this disgusting beard, we'll have a little bit of catharsis, which I think is pretty nice. But let's do what we came here to do. First things first with the beards. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some down beard cringe. The perverted folly of Downbeard. Hello everyone, it's me, Cake Jerry! That's a different Jerry! <laughs> For the uninitiated. <laughs> uh, God, I love how Cake Jerry has become a meme. It's just beautiful. Who, who would have thought one of my Patreon subscribers would become a meme in himself? <laughs> Let not my edgy Reddit username deceive you. The Ataxic one? That doesn't have quite the same ring as Cake Jerry, I gotta be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to share a rather unique neckbeard experience from my time working in fast food. Oh, bless you. Retail is not easy, but fast food, man, that is the toughest of the tough. I say unique because this guy doesn't exactly fit the criteria of a neckbeard to the point where he might not even count as a neckbeard at all. Oh, we will be the judges of that, sir. <laughs> He isn't interested in any nerd interests, as far as I'm aware, and he doesn't have the condescending pseudo-intellectual euphoria of an enlightened atheist. However, his appearance, his seeming lack of social awareness, his refusal to own up to his own mistakes and accept them in a dignified manner, and his shameless and depraved hypersexuality, or at least his lack of sense to not tell others about it without consent, make him, at the very least, neckbeard adjacent. <laughs> uh. Well, honestly, I think you got this nailed down to a T. You've been around the channel long enough, you know what a neckbeard is. <laughs> and while I won't say he ticks all of the boxes, that's not what it takes. Just tick a majority of the boxes and congratulations. Here's your neckbeard crown. Go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> He was so vocally down bad <laughs> that it surpassed all conceivable measurements, going beyond even down atrocious or down horrendous, and thus we have granted him the title of Downbeard. I'm sorry if this total lack of adherence to the strict definition is an affront to neckbeard scholars everywhere, but I don't give a damn. <laughs> It's not an exact science, okay? I gotta be completely honest with you. I don't think anybody is offended. At least not at this point. Although if we get to the end of the story and he's basically a Chad and you're describing him as a neckbeard, then I'm gonna have to roast you a little bit, you know? I've been dying to release this story from the depths of my memories, and hopefully this trauma serves as some entertaining cringe content for you all. <laughs> well, I thank you very much for sharing. Sorry about the trauma, you know? Great things uh, come with pain, or something like that. Massive trigger warning, by the way. I will be describing in full detail all of the things that this neckbeard said. Uh-oh. <laughs> because the depravity of it is important to the story, and this will include some very sexual matters. One mention of severe animal abuse, although he didn't actually abuse an animal, so don't worry. One slight moment of racism, and some borderline pedophilia. 
And when I say it's depraved, I fucking mean it. So read at your own risk. This may cost me the chance of hearing Red X read the story on his channel due to demonetization concerns, but if I tried to censor the story, then there wouldn't be a whole lot of story to tell. No, no, this is good practice, okay? I'm used to dodging these word hurdles. <laughs> Everything's gotta be great, I promise. For a quick rundown of his physical appearance, he definitely fits the criteria of a neckbeard. He didn't noticeably smell bad, but his facial hair and kind of creepy stare made him look eerily similar to the Coomer Wojak, but with the typical body size of a neckbeard. God damn, dude, Wojaks have totally taken the internet by storm in the past couple years. <laughs> I thought the meme would die, but it just doesn't. As we all know, it is the neckbeard on the inside that counts. T-shirt. <laughs> and for the first couple of weeks of working with him, it wasn't too bad. He was nice, didn't cause too much trouble, and he seemed legitimately passionate about his job. At worst, he was just a bit too hyper. The first point of contention was when he shouted something along the lines of, That's because the hospital has them on the best shit in town! Really loudly in the direction of the front counter. <laughs> when there was a customer standing right there. Our general manager had threatened to fire him if he wouldn't stop swearing, so apparently this was already a recurring issue at this point. I mean, to me, that just sounds like a statement of fact. To me. <laughs> the hospital does have the best shit. What do you want? Although I do get, you know, being professional. I don't want to bring my five-year-old into McDonald's and have him walk out saying, yeah, that's the best shit in town. <laughs> uh, yes, you're right, but you can't say it. You can't just say it. Uh, a few days after this, he was talking to other employees via the headset while he was on drive through and while his headset was connected to the drive through speaker, he said, Yeah, I'm your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right when a car pulled into the drive through The customer didn't mind all that much about the incident, but our manager still had to write him up for it since you obviously aren't supposed to swear at unsuspecting customers. Yeah, what if it was like a grandma rolling through the drive-thru? That ain't good. <laughs> a write-up on its own is not the end of the world. At worst, Downbeard would basically just get a slap on the wrist, especially given the circumstances. But to Downbeard, this was the end of the goddamn world. He suddenly got paranoid and started ranting about how nervous he was about losing his job or getting his hours cut which are all valid concerns, but claiming that this job is the only thing supporting my family. <laughs> uh, oh, if that's true, that's sad, but I, I don't honestly think that's true. All while making a huge fuss about basically just a small write-up and saying, ah, I may as well just walk out and quit. <laughs> Seems kind of counterproductive. See, now you know the supporting the family thing is complete trash. It's just something he says to feel like a big man. But if you have the freedom to quit like that, then yeah. You either don't give a single damn about your family, or you're not actually the one that's supporting them. But we all already knew that. Moving on. He also kept begging the manager to call the general manager to ask him what would happen. Which the manager reiterated several times that he couldn't do. And he even started to act shitty towards other employees who he thought were bad-mouthing him due to the write-up. <laughs> uh, nobody cares about the write-up, bro. He ended up making the write-up worse for himself than it ever would have been had he not had a meltdown over it. But as mentioned earlier, all he got was a slap on the wrist. So he could have learned his lesson and just gotten off scot-free. But then he went and did the same exact thing again. He was on drive through again, <laughs> and was arguing with a 16-year-old employee for some stupid reason. One of the customers could hear the argument through the window, and she took it as him being rude to her, which led to her complaining to the manager, which led to yet another write-up for Downbeard. Is this a two strikes and you're out type of thing? <laughs> I hope he doesn't walk into this fast food establishment with an AK, <laughs> go all postal. <laughs> Downbeard, having not learned his lesson, 
went into meltdown mode over the write-up again and became a nuisance over it, of course, yet again. It was arguably even worse this time because he was doing this while we were in a major rush and he refused to go back to his position and was begging the manager to let him have a smoke break <laughs> while cars were wrapped around the freaking building. Just go in the walk-in. That's what everybody else does. <laughs> his behavior was so disruptive that it was causing me social anxiety from the general commotion that he was causing. And I can only assume that others felt the same. Once again, he made his write-up worse, but it was still only a slap on the wrist. What can I say? We were, and still are, desperate for staff. Yeah, because most people know, or at least assume, what it's like to work in a fast food establishment. I ain't never done it for a reason. I'll do anything else. I'll haul bricks. <laughs> Don't make me work at fast food. Uh, but all of this is just a filler arc compared to what comes next. This is where we learn how he got his name. This was during closing time, where it was only me, the manager from both of these incidents, and Downbeard. I was gathering cash drawers for the manager, which led to me making a joke about an ex-employee, who, for convenience sake, I will name Stenchwench. <laughs> uh, I love that name. I'll explain it in a second. She had thrown the cash drawers in a fit of rage, which was in reference to the incident that had gotten her fired. To put the following events into perspective, Stenchwench is a legbeard of nuclear proportions. As obvious by her name, she did not smell good. <laughs> she was extremely unhygienic, lazy, whiny, and just outwardly unpleasant to everyone around her. And that is only the tip of the iceberg. I should get around to making a post about her, if I can unrepress enough memories about her to make one, but for now I'm just describing her to add some context to this story. Upon mention of her name, Downbeat turns to us and goes, Wait, did you guys say stench wench? Isn't that the bitch that used to work at the McDonald's and the local gas station? Uh, yeah? Why? I asked. I would just love to titty fuck that <laughs> Uh, what the hell? <laughs> God, it got me good. It came out of left field. <laughs> he said this with the confidence that few could ever match. The manager and I both had to do a double take. This guy was shamelessly sexually attracted to stench wench and was blurting it out to us without any restraint. Keep in mind as I continue that Downbeard has a wife and a kid. Oh, the beards are reproducing. And the poor wife, that poor woman, why would you put yourself through this? Just leave! I just legitimately hate cheaters, dude. Even in theory, even as like a silly haha -ha joke. It's not a joke. You're disrespecting yourself and your wife. Clean your act up. Uh, and with this, he went on a tangent of horniness <laughs> that absolutely nobody had asked for listing off just about any female that he could think of that we might have been familiar with. To point out a few notable moments, he said he wanted to grudge fuck one of our female managers that he didn't like, and he said he wanted to have sex with one of our former female managers because he never tried chocolate before. Oh <laughs> god. The fetishization, the casual racism, just what a prize this beard is, isn't he? What an absolute specimen. In the middle of his tangent, Downbeard decided to bring up a news story he read on Facebook about someone's wife walking in on some guy while he did unsightly acts on a pit bull. What? <laughs> I have no idea why that was included in the tangent, but trust me, I totally wanted to hear about it while I did my tasks for the night. Yeah, totally, interesting, awesome. Talking about degeneracy will definitely make you a more interesting person. Aw, oh, crap. I feel like I stabbed myself in the foot on that last sentence. <laughs> uh, uh, this one detail is honestly so gross that if you aren't certain that you can handle it, just skip to the next paragraph and spare your stomach. This specific part warrants an extra warning. I'll wait a minute for people that want to skip this part of the video to skip this part of the video. Just 20-30 seconds, that should do it. <laughs> you ready? 
He shared one of his sexual encounters where he was doing anal, and the girl he was screwing took a shit right in the middle of intercourse. <laughs> and he just kept going regardless. <laughs> uh, totally seems like something he would do. And for some reason, he just told us this, as if it wasn't incredibly gross. But I guess he just thought it was funny or something. Now, I have a warped sense of humor, but there's a time and a place, and uh, the work environment is not it. <laughs> Don't try to impress your manager with some story about getting poop on your dick. <laughs> the social awareness, my god. But the crowning moment of this cursed night was when he decided that this was a smart thing to tell us in full confidence. You know, for a 16 year old, that one coworker has a real nice body. Ugh. I could not visibly hide the cringe on my face when I heard this. Downbeard was totally confused as to why we didn't agree with this. Are you telling me that once she turned 18, you wouldn't let her slob on your knob? <laughs> on your uh, oh, God. The saddest part of this entire story is the fact that this subhuman is reproduced. Oh, God. What's his wife like, I wonder? No self-respect, I'll tell you that much. <sighs> no, no, we, we would, would not. not. <laughs> The manager and I both responded to this supposedly irrefusable offer. And this was the note that the night thankfully ended on. <laughs> he ended up going on similar tangents at least twice for the remainder of his time there, including one time where he did it in front of an open drive through window, which a customer was parked right next to. Oh, lovely. Was that the third write-up? Is he gone now? <laughs> Please let it end. The tale of Downbeard has a rather anticlimactic end, although that's probably for the better, let's be real. <laughs> he ended up getting a job at a local restaurant while still keeping his fast food job, but when the general manager caught him calling off work to work at the other place, he was quickly fired. And that is hopefully the last that I will ever see of Downbeard. I don't know if he was truly a pedophile, or at the very least, one that would actually put a child into harm's way, all I hope is that he's too pathetic to be able to do so, even if he did want to. So, thanks for reading through all this, if any of you actually did. The story is probably too much for some to stomach, and that is understandable. But for those of you who chose to share my pain, <laughs> I can never thank you enough. In this small, shitty rural town that I live in, there are enough degenerate cretins that I could write quite a few posts about them. So if this post is well received enough and or I feel motivated enough, then I'll be sure to write those as well. And Red X, if you do decide to read this, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you good, bro. Nobody got assaulted. I mean, it's a creepy conversation, but that's all it is, is a text post about a conversation. So I think we're safe, despite the uh, objectionable subject matter. <laughs> Feel free to censor or skip whatever parts you want if you do read it. Either way, I would be extremely stoked to hear you read this. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, and have a good day, night, whatever. So I have no doubt in my mind that this guy qualifies as pure neckbeard. Delusions of grandeur? He's got them. Self-entitlement? Yep, got that too. And those are the two biggest boxes. It can all be summed up with the one sentence where he's describing what he wants to do to these girls who honestly would probably never have any sort of association with him. <laughs> I'm sure Cake Jerry doesn't even want an association with this guy. It was just uh, unfortunate timing, I suppose, that you ran into this fellow. And I gotta be really, really surprised that he's able to find not just one job, but two jobs. Multiple job, And both of them are in the food service industry? <laughs> uh, I'm never fucking eating out again, bro. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> this is so terrifying. The actual conversation isn't even what gets to me the most in this story. It's like the subtext. This guy works in food service. He has a poor wife and uh, and an arguably poor child, depending on how much of uh, his genetic material she's carrying. 
This is like one of the only cases where I would hope that the wife stepped out on the husband because he doesn't even view women as people. He's just like, oh, yeah, I'd like to try some chocolate. It's like, what the hell? They're not rainbow boxes on a checklist. They're friggin' people, man. And then there's the fact that he would, you know, in theory, chase the 16-year-old around, but I think OP's right in the assessment that he's too bitch to actually ever do it, you know? He's just somebody he likes to talk about, and apparently he wants to talk about it with his coworkers, which is about the weirdest thing ever, the worst place to do it. I have no idea what is going on in this dude's head, nor do I want to. <laughs> just completely whacked out i mean he didn't think that he's a werewolf or something like that but he's definitely one of the stranger neckbeards that we've seen on the channel at least with his openness and sexual proclivities as they've been laid out before us who boy i hope that you guys will let me know if you'd like to hear some more from cake jerry i know that i would if he can unrepress those memories you know take your time dredging them up i know that kind of stuff can hurt but I would indeed like to hear it eventually. I hope that you guys will like, comment, and or subscribe if you have not yet. If you did enjoy the video, that would be absolutely awesome. Super slamming. <laughs> As we used to say back in the 90s or so. <laughs> I also hope you check out the links in the description. We got all kinds of plugs and stuff down there, including some social medias. And, of course, my Patreon with my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. Yes, indeed. Look at all them names. <laughs> I would like to thank them all, but especially Calvicus, Fatboy Shrimp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Teddy the Police, Aaron W., Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Silent Revolver, Zatharis, Zero MMX, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Tower, Caustic Fox, Derpy Tricks, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, OG James Cook, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, no Mag, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, my boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nix, Katiekins Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ash, Siegfried, Steampunk Alley, Synaptic, Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, That Duck and Bug, Fusky, Treeberg, Redwin, Goose Say Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Indoors, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, that's a different Jerry. <laughs> He's also the OP of our story, so thank you double for this video, my friends. Crafty Kitty Cat, Orgami Cam, Princess Rosalie, The Last Shinobi, and the Maestro, Zuka Cervantes. Thank you guys so much for helping out the channel monetarily. It means a whole heck of a lot. I don't have to worry too much about this video getting demonetized because my patrons, they do a lot of that heavy lifting, you know? Obviously, if you can join them, that is absolutely massive. I would hugely appreciate it, but if you can't right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe watch some more Red X videos, yes! <laughs> <laughs> if you want, but always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.